What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Fan Club YouTube channel. I'm Will. I'm Austin. And I'm Lawson. We're going to be talking with athletes, entertainers, and creators about how they built a brand for themselves. So please make sure to like, subscribe, leave us a comment, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out. We hope you enjoy this episode. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Fan Club Podcast. We're excited to be joined by our first live and in-person guest at THG Studios today, a member of the University of Minnesota women's golf team and the Gopher digital production team, Miss Emma Carpenter. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. I feel honored to be the first in-studio guest. That's a lot of fun. So We're super excited that it worked out. It's fun not having to look at a screen today and actually looking at someone in person. Yeah, yeah, I feel that over screen, it's it's not quite as easy to get the uh, get the real camaraderie. <laughs> True, timing's our timing's always off too. It's a little awkward. Happens, happens. Uh, will you give the audience a little brief introduction about yourself for those who may not know who you are? Sure. Yeah. Uh, my name is Emma Carpenter. Um, I am a senior at the University of Minnesota. I'm on the women's golf team, um, and. <sighs> Yeah, basically kind of over the last year, uh, I I would say my life has kind of changed. I um, hopped on doing a podcast uh, with um, Gary Williams, who's on Golf Channel, and uh, Jay Billis, who's ESPN basketball commentating. Um, I've also, I work with uh, Gopher Digital Productions at school. So um, with that, I've been able to do some some more sports casting, which is hopefully what what I want to do one day, or is what I want to do one day. And yeah, just kind of a culmination of a lot of little things here and there don't really feel like sometimes I'm incapable of saying no to things I just I love staying busy and I love um, trying out new stuff and anything that's gonna help me out and that I have fun doing so yeah it's cool it leads me to places like sitting here with you guys today so. <laughs> well we're super pumped to have you so let's start before all of this before you even came to Minnesota how did you get into golf were you always a golfer was your family big into golf why is that your passion and you stuck with it yeah that's a really good question so actually i um so i didn't pick up golf until i was 12. um so i actually i played a lot of other sports growing up um i played a lot of soccer a lot of volleyball like from played start, started playing soccer when i was like five um but then i was also very into singing and theater i was like a huge theater nerd so uh, i was really into um musicals and um <clears throat> love to sing i'm actually I was classically trained for about nine ten years um and so yeah th those were kind of my things and then um i i lived on i'm lucky enough i live on a country club golf course um back back in illinois and there was one day where my dad but the only amenities of the country club i actually used was like the pool <laughs> so uh one day my dad showed up and was trying to pull me out of the pool and was like hey what's up I'm on, we get, there's this like drive chip and putt contest going on at the golf course. And I was like, dad, I don't play golf. I, I don't know why I want to do like, I'm swimming with my friends. I'm hanging out, but, um, yeah, pulled me out and then, uh, ended up like somehow winning this little competition and I got to like move to the next stage and then kind of just some people, our head pro and stuff said that I had a little talent and, um, I kind of just kept going with it and started competing and just kind of got good quickly and it was all history from there just started um started talking to schools um started showing up at schools and knocking on coaches doors <laughs> asking to, to to get a tour of the of the university and then yeah next thing i knew it was it was my thing and um it's yeah everything's just kind of happened from there so just a natural from a young age i mean everyone everyone at their sport i would say is a little bit of a natural but yeah it was um it was surprising for sure i guess did you, did you enjoy those way more than like the other sports you're playing every sport i feel like has its pros and cons um like the fact that golf is an individual sport and uh you know it's kind of all up to you and you're like in con completely in control of your own destiny and uh just a lot of things about golf make it different from some other sports that were maybe team sports um all sports are mental too but golf has like a little different mental aspect of it too um but yeah i mean i love being outside the places we get to travel like the next few weeks my golf team we're going to 
Arizona, find out today actually. Arizona, <laughs> then Naples, then Bahamas. So it's like oh, yeah. the oh, places man. we get to see, like the environment where I play my sport is just so cool. So love that. I've always too. been really jealous of that too. Just the travel locations of college golf. It's so cool. It's awesome. Yeah, you can't come golf here in, until probably June, basically yeah. May or June, because April's even pretty cold around here. So yeah, that's actually fascinating that you get to go to all those places. Minnesota golf rocks, though. I'll stay mm -hmm. here all summer, and all, there's so many good courses around the city. Oh, yeah. So I For love sure. it. And up north. Yeah. Up north is the best. Very Do true. you? Or what's your favorite course that you've actually played? Oof, like ever. Ever. Oof. Not just for the golfers, but. Okay. That's tough. So many good ones. You don't have yeah. to put one on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> People ask me this all yeah. I ask this question too, and then <laughs> yet I still have trouble answering it. Um, I would say one of my favorite courses was with the Gophers that we ever played was in San Francisco. It's called the Meadow Club. Mm. That one is sick. And then also uh, I've competed a few times on Pinehurst number two. Nice. Um, so I always love that. Pinehurst is just a special place. Just so golfy. And <laughs> it's awesome. Um, I was going to ask you, what was it like uh, showing up to a golf tournament? 100 boys, you were the only girl. <laughs> How did that go? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. Was this the drive, chip, and putt? No. Or was this after? No, this was after, yeah. So the drive, chip, and putt was like when I was still in middle school. And then um, pretty much pretty quickly after I picked up golf, um, a lot of the first competitions I was exposed to um, was in high school at boys tournaments mm -hmm. and yeah no i really i do not think that i would be where i am today if it wasn't for all that experience um playing on the playing on the boys golf team it's actually kind of crazy the way that it went down because i wanted to try out for the boys team like first day of practice um coach was setting me up at the red tees and i was like yo i kind of want to try to play on the boys team like straight up can i play the tips today and he's like you can try <laughs> and i ended up making it outright and then i actually didn't play didn't play first event coach don't think coach wanted a, a girl on the mm -hmm. team and then uh um ended up kind of proving myself and uh and then but then by the time I was a sophomore like my coach loved it and I was playing like number one and he thought it was hilarious watching the guys like the way that oh, they yeah. react Couldn't when I was <laughs> they'd be, they'd be doing that. that's good but for you thanks I mean my teammates were so supportive my coach was so supportive but it was definitely like it was definitely interesting. It became bigger than golf. It was about like being a woman in the environment and like proving that girls can be just as good as guys and girls can compete. And, you know, like I said, I was playing, uh, I was tipping it out with the guys playing straight up and uh, I would have a lot of comments made to me, like from parents and um, from boys, like just kind of like, wow, like good for you for trying, like being out here today, you know? Um, what a disadvantage that like you have to play the same tees as my son like wow and then I'd like hit it farther than her yeah. son <laughs> like, so uh, or his son people, just little things throughout people so. are so lame like why yeah. why even open your mouth and say things like that they think they're being nice I think they're like wow yeah. <laughs> just like a backhanded slap to the face really though yeah it feels I we or I grew up playing against Maddie Rooney you guys ever play against her? Yeah. She was a goalie at Andover and then University of Minnesota Duluth. I think she won gold for U.S. in the Olympics a few years ago. I forget mm. where those were, but she, every time we'd go play, we're like, oh, Maddie's in net today, and she's way better than this other kid who's on their <laughs> yeah. team. So we're like pissed that she's in net. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, even from Canada, I played against a tournament, and she was a goalie, and she was like so good. <laughs> and it was the first time, too, we like came to a tournament and played against – like a girl goalie too. It was it was so weird, but it's cool that like they can easily stand out. Oh God, yeah. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Jeez, I love hearing those stories. Hmm. And do you think that's something that really has motivated you on your journey? Is just that purpose of being the only female and kind of <clears throat> paving a path for yourself and proving people wrong. Totally. 100%. Um, golf in general is a is a pretty male dominated sport, and um, I think that to actually like put myself in a situation where I could regularly compete against against uh guys straight up it was 
it was so cool. And I felt like I was able to prove a lot for myself, for female golfers, for females in general. Um, and I mean, of course, I didn't always, I didn't always succeed. Um, there were some bumps in the road along the way, but there's some definitely rewarding moments. So I felt really lucky to have that opportunity. It made me the golfer I am today. It made me the person I am today. So thankful for like my teammates. And honestly, by the time I was a sophomore, junior, like the guys I were, comp I was competing against were like really supportive too. Yeah. Like it, it went well. And I actually even think that the experience kind of helps me with the career that I'm chasing after too. You know, sports casting is a really male dominated industry as well. So like being able to show up and be like, yeah, I, uh, I've been here before, you know, I have put myself in a situation where I can prove myself, um, gives me a lot more, a lot more confidence and just a lot more, um, focus and excitement of, you know, achieving what I want to achieve. Yeah, that's great. Do you, do you, uh, like watching golf as well? Cause I know like there's some people with their sports that they love playing it, but they might not watch it, but what's the, what's, what do you have going on too? Yeah. You know, I feel like that's a good question too. I do love to watch golf. Um, I like to watch it more when I got some people that I'm really pulling for. Um, I feel like with a lot of sports, it's easy to, to do that, but um, I would say, especially talking with more athletes too, and my podcast, I love like being able to hear afterwards, like about those moments, like what was going through their head, like just to get more insight of what was going on and kind of like what caused the outcome. It also helps me as a golfer too. I'm like, yo, how did you pull that off? <laughs> do you want to explain it to me? <laughs> so yeah, I agree with that too. Cause I think that I'm not somebody that watches hockey like at all. But now even talking to more athletes and following them through social media or just getting to know them, it's actually making me more interested in the sport. Like we interviewed a football player and now I just kind of want to know more about that college football path. So it's uh, it's definitely something when you get to actually know the person that's playing it. Mm -hmm. So true. So why did you you're a journalism major, correct? Yep. Did my research right. So <laughs> nice. why why did you want to study journalism and where did that interest come from? Has that always been something that you've been really kind of wanted to dive into? Yeah, I well, I always love to write. Um, and I'm just a huge people person. I love to chat with people like what we're doing right now is literally what I live for. I just love people and hanging out and talking. Mm -hmm. But um, so so kind of combining that piece with the writing and the communication with uh, my love for sports, um, just kind of towards the end of high school, sat down with my parents and they're like, what do you want to do? What do you want to study? And um, just about kind of playing, I guess, to your passions and your strengths. And I just thought that kind of like sports broadcast just seemed like something that I thought I could do and something that I knew that I would love to. So just kind of went with it and have done everything I could to, to keep that that dream going. <laughs> Did you write in high school like for a school paper or something about sports? Or? I didn't. No, I didn't. Um, I would have I would have loved to. I wish that I had mm -hmm. uh, would have helped me a lot more heading into college. Um, uh, I, I mean, I took a lot of classes in high school, um, English and, and writing and things like that, but um, nothing, nothing specific mm -hmm. in that way. I saw your article um maybe it's been a few articles on the minnesota daily yeah how did you get connected with them and was that through a school or was it just kind of they reached out to you yeah that's a good question too um part of why i've loved being at the university of minnesota is because i actually feel like i've gotten so much out of school mm -hmm. which is really cool to say like how many people can be like oh dude like i get so much out of school <laughs> <laughs> but i genuinely do um my coach loves loves when I tell recruits that but um Good. yeah yeah but I mean it's because my professors in the journalism school are like so freaking qualified and they're like writing for the wild in the star tribune or they have like won awards for um like packages that they put together it's like super cool they're awesome and a lot of the work that I've done in class has actually um has actually transferred over into something that I could take a step further and put on my resume. So um, actually I wrote that article for a class and mm -hmm. my prof reached out to me and was like, yo, um, I think you should pitch this to the daily. I think that they'd really like to run this story. Um, and that's 
exactly what happened and he was like i'll help you edit um like i'll help you yeah he rocks right That's so amazing. Uh, and it was it was the same story with another prof too i i put together a, a video um news feature uh feature uh sports feature story sorry and um same thing after i turned it in it was like a final assignment she's like hey um you did a good job uh the university i reached out to the university and they said that they would pay to enter it in the student emmys and i was like okay <laughs> it's like sounds good and then i ended up winning that so like it was super rewarding because it was really my first time working with equipment being like a multimedia journalist actually like filming all your own stuff and, and writing all of it doing all of it editing um so that was super rewarding super cool as well um feel very very lucky yeah. my props mm -hmm. are awesome i so. watched that video yesterday and really wanted to ask you about what are the student emmys if people don't really know about it is it nationwide is it school by school um so um it, the, it's like regional okay. um so it's like in our region states in our region and um there's a million different um there's a million different uh what word am i looking for um like sections um top what hello uh, just entries yeah. that you can put it in right so categories cat thank you my <laughs> goodness categories Whew. Um, there's a million different categories mm. and, uh, <laughs> so mine was like sports feature and I'm not kidding. I showed up to this, um, like the awards cause you gotta get nominated. You gotta apply or submit your entry and then get nominated. And then I showed up and there's all these kids who did like, they made music videos and they did all of this stuff. And I'm like, geez, like these <laughs> kids are so good. And they've been like working on it since high school. And I was like, how am I here right now? Um, but yeah, Midwest. So ours is Midwest, Midwest Student Emmy Awards and um, some other kids in my journalism classes who are, again, awesome. They've entered and in, in won as well, I think. So it's amazing. That's nice that too, you're like going to school and the stuff that you're learning is actually applying like pretty far outside of just doing something in your class. And then it's just not going anywhere after like you still get to, I'm sure use a lot of those skills for your podcast and making other videos um yeah that's just nice that like for me i'm like taking exercise physiology and then in my spare time i'm editing youtube videos and trying to storytell which is kind of counterproductive mm -hmm. How many of us actually know what we want to yeah, do though exactly. when we're 21, 22, 18, 19, when you first start college? I know you guys started college a little later, yeah. but, but totally. I mean, you probably would have loved, like loved in school to like sit down and edit and like start learning some of that. Like, mm -hmm. obviously it's even more impressive that you've been gotten as good as you are um, without working on that like, in class. So props to you for that. I know I wouldn't know could have, a lot of things. Could have been a little less hurdles to jump through, but <laughs> yeah, it still ended up working out, but yeah, no. Yeah, it did. So you're on the golf team, you're traveling, you're doing journalism, school. How do you balance all this stuff out? How do you stay organized? And do you have any tips for maybe other student athletes that feel like there might be a lot on their plate? That is a phenomenal question. And you know what? I think I answer it differently depending on the day. I'm not kidding. Like I personally, I really like to stay busy. I feel better when I'm staying busy. I feel more productive. I actually feel like in a weird way, more organized and like with it when I'm busy. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when I take some like too much time off, I like just stress out about all the things I want to do. Yeah, you just feel like, Oh, mm -hmm. shouldn't I be doing something? Exactly. Right now? Yeah. Like feel guilty almost, but um, I think, and everybody also works differently. Like a lot of people work really well, just kind of putting their head down, getting their stuff done. But for me, like part of what keeps me energetic and like excited to start each day is really enjoying everything that I'm doing. Like when I go to practice, I can't just be like, okay, I just got to like buckle down for two hours and I got to just get this done. I've got to be like hanging out with my teammates. I got to be making it fun. I got to be having an awesome time because that's what's going to keep me going and keep me excited for the next thing. Um, but I mean, it definitely, it does get, it does get really busy. It does get overwhelming for sure. And, but that would be my biggest advice would be to, um, to other athletes, to really anybody who likes to live a busy schedule would just be to, um, you know, take care of yourself, make sure you're getting sleep, good nutrition, and then also just finding the enjoyment and everything you do. It sounds a little cliche, but 
it's true. Like it's what, it's what keeps me, you know, excited, ready to conquer the day. <laughs> no, that's so true. I mean, we wouldn't come here every day for 10, 12 hours if we didn't love it. Right. Like, yeah. Lawson's here probably eight to 9 PM every day. Like grinder. I'm, I think, I think we're kind of similar that way mm -hmm. where I like being busy a lot. And when I feel like I go on a vacation, it's just almost stresses me out because I want to get so much done and knowing that you have some time to relax you you're supposed to take that but you know then you can't work on those things that are kind of like spinning around your head the whole time which i feel like is kind of similar to what you just said there yeah so true i mean maybe one day you and i can both find like a good system like think about beforehand <laughs> <Yeah>. or something <laughs> yeah. i don't know i haven't quite figured it out yet the whole the whole resting piece of it but but yeah. would you ever want to kind of narrow down in the future of doing less things or like picking is it the podcast is it is it one thing that is such a good question um i was talking to a professor um because next year i'm gonna be in grad school right and my professor was like hey listen you're doing a one-year master's program um it probably will be physically impossible for you to do mm -hmm. everything that you're doing right now so you might need to cut back and like just him saying that stressed me out a little bit because mm -hmm. i was like oh no i don't want to you know, I don't want to derail myself, but I mean, at the end of the day, because I also get really, um, I don't feel good when I finish something that I didn't like do to the best of my ability. Like even in school, if I turn something in and I'm like, that was no good. Or if I do a podcast where I'm like, wow, I could have been more prepared or something like that. Not saying I felt like that, but if I did, I would lose it. Mm -hmm. So um, he's probably right um, in that some decisions are gonna have to be made. And it helps having my summers too. Like last summer, worked a lot at the 3M Open, uh, went down to Pinehurst for Golf Pride, um, just stayed just stayed busy uh, with my schedule, but at least had some like periods of time dedicated to one thing. I think that helps. Mm -hmm, for sure. You sound like you have a lot of people in your life who are giving you good advice and good guidance. Is there one person that is maybe like, your mentor or you go to when you really need like hey i've got eight different opinions coming at me i want to talk to you about it is there someone that's led you through these tough times and taught you to be who you are today wow Whew. we're getting deep that is you could make me cry honestly because like even that question is like i feel like i have been so unbelievably lucky with all of the people who have given me advice and offered me mm -hmm. help um my, my parents always say like emma i just can't even believe like how lucky you are how many people want to help you like i have i'm not kidding i could rattle off like 10 names off the top of my head of people who have literally changed my life i guess like the end all be all is gonna be my mom um i always keep her up to date with everything i'm doing and she also you know worries about me and, and my health and <laughs> stay insane so um i I talk to my mom all the time and I guess if I if I really need advice of like what is best for me um not every I mean everybody cares about me first of course everybody really um but I guess I, I guess I would go to my mother yeah I would say my mom too 100 percent. same shout like out moms shout out moms <laughs> they're the best hockey moms are the best golf moms are the best yeah um so it's kind of a similar question but Who's someone that inspires you in the broadcasting world? Mm. Because obviously we all learn from people we look up to and say, I want their job. I want to work with them one day. Yeah. Um, we all have those one or two people who really like you're taking notes when you're watching them. Who is that person for you? Because I have so many things um, going on in, in my life right now uh with broad like i'd have a different answer for broadcasting mm -hmm. for golf for for other things like with golf like my my best friend my roommate uh grace Curran, she really inspires me um it's like just such a hard worker such a healthy lifestyle um and when it comes to golf how hard she works inspires the heck out of me um when it comes to broadcasting you know I, this summer at the 3M Open, I uh, had the opportunity to meet and work with Amanda Balionis, Renner a little bit, and also Chantel McCabe. And um, they're both women. I mean, Amanda Balionis, like, pfft, she was like, got my dream job. Like, she is so cool. And like, I felt cool just meeting her and we were 
chatting and she's like commented on my stuff on instagram or something I'm like this is, this is real no way yeah. <laughs> but um and then chantelle mckay worked with her a lot and just like you know not everything in life is going to be sunshine and rainbows um you're gonna hit some bumps on the road i have i will hit more bumps on the road but it's it's all about how you respond to it and um definitely just like the way that those women handle themselves with like so much class and clearly like you got to be so you got to have your you got to have your stuff together mm -hmm. um to work to work in that industry and um I definitely definitely take notes when I watch those two women. Um, I feel super lucky to have met them and gotten to, to talk with them a lot um, just because they are awesome and I want to be like them. Do you feel like you're far away from that stage or what's missing for you to get there? That's a good question too. Um, you know, I guess it, it depends on the day. Sometimes I say like, I think I'm ready to, to forego um, uh, grad school and I think I'm ready to start working right now. Um, you know, I have some people who I think are, are very nice and optimistic and they're like, Emma, you're ready. You're ready to start working, um, at whatever level. And then sometimes I'm like, I am in way over my head. I did, I did a podcast with Bryson DeChambeau and I had like a mini panic attack the night before. Cause I was like, how are they letting me do this? Like, it's like my bosses are like, you got it. Like, no worries. Do your thing. And I'm just like, how are they letting me do this? This is like such a big deal and I cannot blow it. But it all, you know, I, I calmed myself down and got prepared. <laughs> but, I think it's something yeah. when you hear a big name like that and you're like, oh my God, I'm meeting him or her tomorrow. Yeah. Like, what am I going to do? How's it going to go? Am I going to be nervous and not say exactly what I want to say? Right. And then you meet these people and most of the time they're just like the easiest people to ever talk to. So true. It's so true. The way we can, the way we can freak ourselves out. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's like golf too. So I, I get so nervous even still before events. I feel like a lot of the stuff that I do prepares me for golf um, and like helps calm my nerves. Um, what I went through in high school, what I'm doing now, but uh, still like, I get so nervous beforehand and but then once i'm out there i'm like oh wait it's like the same sport but <laughs> the sport the rules didn't change yeah it's yeah the same thing you guys can probably relate to that a lot too mm -hmm. is it different for you the feeling because i feel like golfers have to be so good at staying calm because there's a lot of pressure you have like tee shots with everybody watching you like the mistake on a golf shot too is it's not hard to make a mistake there yeah. so has that helped you then into interviewing podcasting and the rest of your life or is it kind of a different thing to attack totally well i mean golf similar to all sports are kind of like um minimizing the mistakes right like you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes like you're hitting around 72 golf shots around like you think all 72 shots are gonna be perfect but like you're gonna you're gonna make some mistakes have some errors but it's about it's about the next shot right it's about what you do about it same thing like um with the podcast we're doing today like it's not like every single sentence i've put together has been perfect it's not like i've um same thing with all my other stuff i do like it's just not going to be perfect but it's about how you respond it's about what you do next similar in golf similar in a lot of other sports too so i would definitely say that just that whole mindset in golf and being able to you know keep your composure and and relax when something does go wrong and not panic is what saves you too so that totally applies to to life in general and and work I feel like we learn a lot from a lot more from sports than we actually ever think, so especially true. when you're in the moment, like maybe you're at practice and you learn a new skill or technique or something. But then in this less than a year since we've all been retired, it's like I've actually learned so much about how to work with other people and what it what I need um, to kind of get ready for different things. Our joke is on every podcast day, we call this a game day. So like last night, it's like we make all these rules. Don't do these things before game day. And then in the morning, like get your game day coffees in and everything. But yeah. that's just our thing. And it transitioned from an actual hockey game to a podcast because mm -hmm. this is our new passion. I love it. Yeah. I love it. That's awesome. It's yeah. the same. It's the same same kind of vibe, right? We're dorks, but we love it. We really <laughs> kind of learn how to take things seriously, too. And that's why we call this our game day, because we needed hockey. And obviously we went through that process of preparing for it and actually putting effort into it because that's what you need to do if you want to actually play good. Mm -hmm. So now same with, yeah, this for us, we know that we need to prepare, we need to practice and we need to like treat it kind of like it's our new 
game day thing. So you for sure I learned a lot of that from hockey. That is awesome. That's that's a that's a great one. <laughs> I love that. It's game day. Yeah. Welcome to our game day. <laughs> so let's talk about five clubs podcast. Alrighty. How did you get roped into that? Or did you I like knowing how people get connected. Yeah. So you said that you were knocking on doors when you were trying to talk to schools and things. Do you still do that? Is that what you did for this? Or how did you c get connected with five clubs? You know, um, people, I've gotten this question asked a lot. And, you know, at the start, I want to say, I want to say that, like, it was something that I did. It, it was all my doing. But, I mean, the truth is, is, like, I got very lucky. I got very, very lucky, and I definitely don't take that for granted. Um, it was after NIL changed, and um, I was reached out to by a guy who is now my boss um, who was asking about a um, uh, Golf Pride campaign, Golf Pride Grips, um, and I was telling him about myself. I was saying that I'm a broadcast journalism major, really want to work in sports casting, and he was like, really? Okay, well, this is something like entirely separate, but we've actually recently started a podcast with Gary Williams, who was on the Golf Channel Morning Drive for 10 years, and um, we've been talking about bringing on female voices. We've been talking about uh, talking more about the college game. Like, He's like, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, but would you maybe want to would you maybe be interested in like hosting your own segment or something like that? I was like, yes. Oh, like that'd be amazing. So basically um, he's like, all right, cool. We'll let's set up an interview. Um, so I got hopped on a zoom call in the next couple of days with, with him and his boss was the president of the, of the uh, marketing agency. That was kind of the umbrella over five clubs and Gary Williams as well. And I mean, I really took this opportunity to just like, I knew I had no experience and I just kind of sold myself in terms of like knowing my abilities, knowing what I'm good at, um, where my passions lie, like saying that, Hey, I know I don't have an experience. I don't have experience, not even close to what Gary has, but I'm going to like do everything in my power to, um, to make this as, as good as it can be. And to really feel like I can contribute and help out. And next day or so they offered me the position got the ball rolling and they uh set me up with my first guest and then ever since then I just have been have been building off of it and finding all my own guests and doing my own thing and starting up with uh, other broadcasting other jobs and just keep building and building and building and getting better and trying and you know going like this but uh it's been it's been amazing and I am so lucky really just so lucky you said you got nervous when you were uh, interviewing Bryson DeChambeau. Do you ever have that same kind of nervousness on the course? Or you said you perform, do singing, theater. Do you have different levels of nervousness when it comes to that stuff? Yeah, totally. Um, I think it's just because I, um, it means so much to me to, to do as well as I possibly can. Um, I put a lot of pressure on myself to to perform at the highest level. Um, you guys can probably relate to that a lot too. Uh, but so yeah, I started singing the national anthem at some this would go for sporting events too, and I hadn't performed for several years. But it's like I put all of that like at the highest possible importance. Like everything just means the world to me, and um, I feel like the nerves that I face have definitely prepared me for um other for other uh, other things all all the other avenues of of my life that I'm kind of chasing I was a, gu I was a guest speaker in a class this week in a class that I used to take <laughs> so it was so yeah. funny but like <laughs> afterwards the kids were asking me they're like oh it's like were you nervous I talked these kids ears off for an hour these like these kids were like my classmates mm -hmm. literally talked their ears off for an hour and they're like were you like nervous to talk to us and I was like huh I actually wasn't nervous at all. Like, mm. but you know, probably last year I would have been, um, just getting used to, to talking all the time. Yeah. Um, and you guys still probably get nervous too, but the more you do it, the better you feel. Oh, 100%. I'm sure. You get nervous. 10,000 fans at Mariucci yeah. is nothing compared to a classroom. So like once you get to that level and then you go back down to, Oh, it's just a podcast or it's just a speaking in front of a class. It kind of like, it's the word I'm looking for, but like dampens the nerves maybe. Mm -hmm. So, but I wanted to switch gears actually to ask you, because you said 
uh, when NIL came in and that had something to do with your uh, going on the podcast and starting that, what did that uh, change for it? Or how did that help you get on it in the first place? Yeah. First of all, switching gears, it's a fire transition. That's one okay. I use all the time in my podcast oh, too. Switching gears. <laughs> oh, switching Switch gears here. It's like so seamless. I'm like, wow, that sounded nice. I, just, I wanted to go back to it because I heard you say it and I really wanted to talk to you about that. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, that's an awesome question. Honestly, like, again, I'm just so lucky that kind of the way that uh, these events like happen in the order that they did because NIL ended up kind of changing uh changing my life because nil was the initial start of what got me involved in the podcast and technically my podcast is an nil opportunity they mm -hmm. decided so um i originally wanted to do the podcast like um in at our practice facility but i technically can't um that's why i ended up hooking up with more tpc twin cities and with olympic hills and that was actually part of what got me into the 3m open and got all those opportunities but nil um, aside from any money, um, you know, money's neither here nor there, uh, but uh, it's it definitely just gave me opportunities, got me meeting the right people, got me getting the right advice from the right people, and 100% uh, changed my life. So I'm I'm very grateful that it worked out the way it did. Ours too. Yeah. <laughs> right? Literally, yeah. literally right? a game changer it, yeah. it for changed our, our outcome. Just to be able yeah, – and it's not – besides the money it's just the opportunity that it came with like we could like do things with other people like going to the winter classic and stuff like that because once i felt like kind of floodgates went open with the offers and the opportunities that people looked at like us college athletes as one that happened like yeah. just like your yeah. situation bringing the stanley cup to our teammates we got to yeah. surprise that Ooh, with, that's uh, so cool yeah in our little hometown we were able to bring the stanley cup there a lot of people had fun with that and it's opened a lot of doors for a lot of other people too he went to the nil awards i think the last summit? year mm -hmm. the summit the summit i saw that mm -hmm. i saw that mm -hmm. yeah awesome. that was a cool i'm surprised too like did uh you wouldn't have been nominated or like anything like that did you no i'm not that cool get a you are cool <laughs> you, you you would easily be deserved to be up there for what you've done but That's do you have nice. plans to do more of that or are you eager to kind of you've had a feel for it are you eager to do more and more with it now yeah that's again another awesome question um i think that NIL for me and for you guys, it wasn't about cash. It was about having a platform, right? All of a sudden, like you can put yourself out there and you can speak on things you're passionate about. You can, you know, show off fun things that you're up to more of like your life and you as a person rather than just an athlete. Um, and that's kind of what NIL helped do for us. Um, but for me, and I'm sure similar to you guys, I've been very careful about the deals that I want to take on. At first, I didn't know what I was doing, but now it's like, when I, if I have the opportunity to actually work with brands that I'm passionate about and that, um, you know, a, a lot of the stuff that I've done with like second swing or what I did with golf pride, like it literally gave me a platform to help grow women's golf and just golf in general and, um, women's sports, like all of the above. So it was more than just like putting out advertisements. It's literally having a platform to, um, change the game and help hopefully help other people along the way as well for sure i feel message. like yeah i feel like in golf there's a lot of unknown of especially about the golfers on the pga or lpga there's not many that the majority of people have never heard of these golfers mm -hmm. they all hear the big names and that's about it but the fact that you're able to grow the game of golf as a still college athlete more than probably some people on the tour is actually like that's insane and it's because of nil and what you've been working for so well that's very nice <laughs> well it's just so cool that everyone who started something and are going after things as college athletes now can truly set themselves up for careers after school mm -hmm. rather than graduating and then job hunting yeah things are so different now you can start your career as a freshman in college mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why haven't you started the tiktok page <laughs> oh my gosh oh, that's yeah, i was gonna ask that too yeah i want trust me i want to i i want to it's, i think it's just like i've been putting it off a little bit mm -hmm. because i've been so on instagram and then 
working in the podcast and just like super super busy and again i don't necessarily want to do something like halfway i'm like oh i actually want to put out like a tiktok that people will like and you know i don't know i'm, I'm a little nervous yeah. too i'm like oh no what if people don't like it <laughs> well we'll uh we'll have to get on the golf course this summer and you show us a few tips and then we'll help you make yes 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 no there's definitely a, a hurdle there to start but i think especially like early on now i've been seeing a lot of college golfers on tiktok really but yeah. i truly think you would dominate that area that genre if you if you were on it like consistently making videos or showing because you not even you golfing but you live such a unique life over that with everything else you do um that you would have a really cool story for a lot of like other people to look up to well, that's really, yeah. really nice. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I did. it's definitely something that I want to do. I got to just I got to just pull the trigger and and get going, I think. But I think the piece of it, too, is like, as we know, working in social media, you got to be consistent, like you got to be. Um, and it it gets hard to keep up with multiple platforms. Mm -hmm. I'm jealous of you guys. You got more bodies. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a strength for us. Yeah. <laughs> and I always try to think of it as trying to tie in everything you're doing as part of your content and not trying to spend more time to do it. You'd obviously probably have to take time to edit everything but if you were doing a podcast and they let you like cut up your highlights like every episode and you can use that as content plus yeah. some other things then Facts. at least then you're again you can be somewhat consistent building off the things you're already spending your time doing yeah if you didn't know you're talking to a content coach right there <laughs> yeah i know right day. i should get out my notepad <laughs> yeah yeah this is the this is the stuff i enjoy <laughs> <laughs> it's your bread and butter uh, you seem to be a pretty great ambassador for the University of Minnesota. Um, how has getting involved in school and school events really helped you? And have you is that common at the U? Are, are there a lot of athletes that are super involved in different things or students? Or involved are you kind in... of a, involved in working for the production team? Is it all students or... How do they find? Yeah, that. Yeah. Um. So great question. I think I've said that after every question you guys have asked. I'm like, yeah, good question. <laughs> oh, we're just rocking the um, questions. <laughs> just firing them off. Oh, uh, love it. But, um, for me, uh, so yes, um, I would say it's been really fun to get involved in, in different things and be more versatile in that way. Um. So for go for digital productions, it's a lot of people who are interested in. Um, whether they're interested in camera or just like tech in general or a lot of people like sports and that's part of why they do it but they're really really talented and like coding behind the scenes and um editing and things like that um we're putting graphics up on the jumbotron we're yeah. doing all the above or with gdp is when i've started to do some like play-by-play -play, color commentary kind of stuff sideline reporting uh but you know it's, it's like half students half freelancers um who are not in college anymore and then also like uh i've gotten involved in in um uh, like when I've written for the daily or things like that, those are all kids who are in the journalism school and a lot of kids who um, I have classes with. And then also the people that they have like in rotation of like singing national anthems. It's there's some students there. There's also some um, like maybe professional singers or, mm -hmm. or people who um, are, are chasing a, a professional singing career, things like that. Um, but it's really cool it's really, really cool to, to be involved. I mean, any student athlete who's just a student athlete is so involved in the school and right. representing the school big time, same way you guys were. Um, you guys even had even a bigger platform, which is so, so cool. Um, other athletes are involved on social media as well. So for me, it's just kind of like been able to realize what I'm passionate about and then just like tap into all of it yeah. um, and like meet so many cool people along the way. I've got um, a lot of people who want to do exactly what I do in, in my classes with me and um, I'm tight with them, tight with my teammates, tight with other athletes. Um, just, you know, it, it's more than just building a network. It is building a network, but it's also like making friends and, yeah. and enjoying it. No, it sounds like there's a really strong community of people at the U. Yeah. I'm, I am so lucky. I was saying this at the class I was talking to the other day. I was saying like, I, the University of Minnesota athletic department too, like the resources that they offer. And like, like I've had the athletic director reach out to me and just be like, Hey, like, 
saw you sing like that was so cool or he gives every single student athlete like his phone number is like wow. you ever need anything like just reach out to me and this That's is like great. a big school we're talking yeah. about right mm -hmm. like it's so personal our like our academic advisor is awesome like if i got a test coming up i literally text him i'm like yo i really need to study hard for this test and he'd be like oh like you got it car plug <laughs> <laughs> it's like everything is so personal and i feel so genuinely supported same with like my coaches like they genuinely care about each and every one of us as people like our athletic department rocks that's amazing that's super cool to see because i mean being from minnesota i don't even know that much about the u i just know it's big no sad I really know. like of all the sports and things like that but I didn't never had interest in going there I think I just always wanted the smaller school feel yeah but um that's really cool to see that the community is so great between students and student athletes and and the professors and higher ups yeah that's a big deal because some people probably don't even see their athletic director yeah ever in their four years yeah yeah well that's what's cool i think about the u is like i get that big school feel but at the exact same time there's little communities throughout mm -hmm. there's the athletic department which is its own community there's journalism which is its own community that i have got all my coworkers at gdp like so much of of it is like or even you know some people that i've worked with in the minnesota area outside of the u like there's all these little communities and tight-knit families the golf world's pretty small too so mm -hmm. um yeah it's awesome yeah, especially with, uh, I just wouldn't have guessed that at a big school, would have totally thought it didn't feel like that, but I guess, uh, Minnesota guess nice, we should have played for the Gophers, Will. I guess so. <laughs> should have worked harder as kids. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. If it wasn't for my bum knee. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> what's the hardest, uh, we'll start wrapping it up here, but what is the hardest sport to live broadcast or sideline report for all right toughest thing easily these are always these just interest me this is this is easy um doing when i did play-by-play -play or color commentary for baseball just a lot of dead space oh. like you got to talk a <laughs> lot that's a great like yeah. a lot long these games get long too my my voice i dude i talk so i talk way too much but like and my voice my voice is even tired after these games i'm just like what do i say i'm running out of things to talk about <laughs> um well, but do do it? it's it's so impressive like the more i've done it the more when i watch a sports game i like i like to listen in mm -hmm. to what the commentators are saying and stuff and i mean and it's it's never seamless like you can never do a game even the best of the best like they can't do a game and without saying something and being like oh whoops i was wrong like i thought it was this call it wasn't this call whatever it's just things like that happen imagine staying up and staying super into it for 162 games in the mlb <laughs> every it. single yeah. day not could not good. do it for a hockey oh. game too i would be so bad at that yeah that'd that's be a hard. fun challenge it'd be a fun challenge because it's so fast yeah yeah same with basketball or football football i would be completely lost and i love watching football but i sometimes can't follow the ball yeah <laughs> I, did, I did i did color for for uh for women's hockey mm. and luckily i wasn't doing play-by-play -play. Yeah. the play-by-play -play guy was awesome and like knew all the players and stuff because that's the thing like you got to know i knew all the players but like i would like maybe need a second to be like Who's right. that? but he does every single game so he like knows them um but uh it like the fast-paced games it's like you just you gotta know people like for volleyball it was my favorite um by far but it's like I'm studying up on like each player's like name, uh, year, position, hometown, like all the above, everything about them, right? Like stats, random stats. And then you got to be able to recall all of that in like less than a second as it's going. So do you ever sleep? <laughs> People ask me this question a lot. Um, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of caffeine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, so do it through all these situations, do you have a, uh, like we've talked about a lot of the highlights, do you have like the one mistake or regret, <laughs> embarrassing moment from putting yourself out there like over and over and over again, or has it been smooth sailing? Is there like one moment? It's kind of funny. Like an on the air type of moment? Yeah, on the air. Um, yeah, anything like that. Maybe it's a There's just so singing many. moment. There's so many. Is there? Oh yeah. Um yeah, I mean, gosh. 
I've said some really stupid things on the air. Um, that's that's like the number one fear, isn't yeah. it? Right? Like, I just don't want to say something. Stupid. You don't want to get clipped and put on Twitter or something. <laughs> right. Right. Um, I said something that, like, I think I even posted. I said that I got a golf club six years ago, and people were commenting. They're like, "That golf club came out three years ago." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, that's definitely not right." I said that that was wrong. Um, on the air live, I during a baseball game, I like said something that was just completely wrong like mm -hmm. watched it back and i was like that's so embarrassing um so yeah little moments like that more so i'd say uh in golf like on the golf course that's where nobody even really sees that as much right i guess the stakes aren't as high in terms of like what people are seeing but um you can look up you can look up scores that's the thing that's tough about golf is like mm -hmm. you can't get a sub you got to finish out and you mm -hmm. got to post a number um so yeah, some some important moments where I had a lot of people watching me and uh, struggled, hit some, probably shanked a few or did something like that. But yeah, there's there's a lot of embarrassing moments. I put myself on the spot, like in those situations, way too much to to not have a lot. But hey, I mean, getting uncomfortable with that makes it so much better because we've absolutely thrived in embarrassing ourselves ever since the start. <laughs> That's kind of the whole thing. Kind of reminds me of uh, the other month. Yelly put his pads on on the wrong legs. And that's the thing about what you said with in baseball, if you say something totally wrong or golf and the fans just know like the hardcore sports fans in those niches just know so well. And they just love to attack you for doing that. So yeah. he, he put his pads on the wrong way and it got into the hockey uh, niche on TikTok, whatever. And just a <laughs> oh, bunch no. of comments like this guy put his pads on the wrong way. He has like, everybody noticed it and we like hardly noticed it. it's not a big deal but was it just like for the bit or did you was it an accident like complete accident, <laughs> accident. it yeah. was an accident but yeah well, and you play hockey better than like probably 99 percent of the people who are commenting on it yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> exactly they just love to attack on on social media those sports groups do you, you guys know? deal with that you ever deal with any like hate on social everyone just says like definitely there's hate but mm -hmm. the people are like these guys aren't actually good at hockey, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, we're not a page showing off hockey skills. Mm -hmm. We're trying to have fun and show what we do now and that our hockey days are over. Right. So it's completely different. But yeah, I don't know. They get mad if these guys are suck, blah, blah, blah. They get owned by the, the <laughs> NHL. Like, yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're so D3 wash you. up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. Like, well yeah, it's been know. good. Truly, truly nothing that's gotten to the point yeah. where we're like, hey, we should do something different. It's been, we've been lucky. But mm -hmm. yeah, when it gets to those people that think they know the game and think they know what we're about that say those things, it's like, doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Who cares? They have no idea what you're even like doing it for anyway. So just, yeah, don't let those things get to us really. We all know we're not playing in the NHL one day. Exactly. Yeah. That dream's passed. Yeah. <laughs> so what's coming up for the rest of the year and leading into summer? Rest of the any, year. Any exciting events or anything? Uh, I would say I'm most excited. Um, a few weeks from now, first actual event is in the Bahamas, playing at Albany, oh. Tigers course, like staying at the Bahamar. Mm. We're just yeah, that should be okay. living it up, right? I know. Uh, yeah, college golf sucks. <laughs> you need a student section? <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, that would be cool. Hey, you're welcome. We got some, we got some events. Um, next fall in, in minnesota and people show up and they're like we fun. can do this it's like yeah you can you can cheer as loud as you can as long as it's not in someone's backswing <laughs> yeah, that'd be great that would be fun we'll go to the bahamas though yeah, yeah that's yeah. what you that's that's where you guys should you guys should show up that'd be that'd be fun <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah so that event um we got a we got a solid team this year we got some freshmen who are so dang good at golf um like we broke our school record this fall of but we beat about like 10 mm -hmm. of lowest score ever um big thanks i got this one teammate who broke the course record back-to-back -back events as a freshman wow. just disgusting so to, so good um and so yeah um we got a good shot at postseason if we can kind of keep this rolling in which would be the best that our team has done in in quite a few years so got that to look forward to but um, also excited to to keep up with what I got going on at school um, projects that I'm due for that because um, that's again like I said stuff that I can kind of build off of and then also stuff with the pod um, stuff with work um, work more with second swing uh, just got a deal going with uh, golf zone simulators really excited about that 
and start putting out a uh, working on my schedule for this summer jobs that I can get that I can do then so yeah just kind of keep rolling with it it's amazing that is amazing <laughs> thanks guys we get stressed out when we have a game day here in the studio and you're out here planning your summers already think think about if you had a had a game day like almost almost every day too like it's sure. probably gonna it's probably gonna start stacking up because you're gonna have a lot of people who are like want to be on the podcast you're gonna have people knocking on your door That'd and then you're great. gonna yes. you're gonna have it you're gonna line out the in the hallway yeah sit here and interview people all day you're gonna have yeah. fans out the front out the front of your office yeah. holding up signs <laughs> like let me <laughs> on That'd be amazing That'd be awesome yeah well, thank you so much. Yes, this, we you, just yes. blew through almost an hour. It felt it went so by fast. Sad. Yeah, <laughs> it did go it went by so fast. by fast. <laughs> <laughs> it did go quick. No, it's uh, definitely enjoy in person. Uh, yeah, guess it's been great. Not only that, I mean, you were a lot of fun to talk to. But I think, uh, yeah, I think the the in person thing is good that we can switch it up a bit, get off of Zoom every now and then and mm -hmm. it was yeah really yeah. enjoyed it just yeah, another, no. first, another first another first first <laughs> well you're gonna have a lot of those and get to keep going with it which is which is awesome thank you guys so much for having me in today you guys are awesome hosts this was like super super fun so i'm really glad that that we yeah, could thanks. do this thanks for coming to hang out it was a blast and you can find emma on instagram and twitter with emma carpenter three m's and emma and be sure to check out all her uh, great stuff she's posting. <laughs> and these guys too. I'm excited. I'm excited to to keep following what you guys doing. What you guys are doing because you got a lot ahead. We're trying. We're doing our best. <laughs> well, do we do the signature? Emma, we are a fan. We are a fan. Yes, we're trying to really fans. lock that down. We don't really know exactly how to do it, <laughs> but our, uh... we're fans. Yeah, that's why <laughs> we're fans for sure. Carp, you said Carp was your nickname. Yeah, I get that one a lot. Yeah, I'm fans Carp. of Carp. Fans of Carp. <laughs> Carp well, thank you everybody for tuning in. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment to the fan club, and we greatly appreciate all your time. This has been an absolute blast. Thank you again, Emma, for coming on. And Cuddy, sign us out.